Welcome back to today's Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today I'm going to take a look at the fantastic first season of the show Barry. So let's not waste time there's a lot to go through so I'm going to go straight into the shots. All right in this discussion we have this character and Barry talking about jobs and everything I'm going to talk about prop usage but also a gesture at the beginning. I love what he does here. Usually, I mean usually, there's always a time and place for everything, but pointing at things is always kind of a bit on the nose, a bit pointy, you know, but what I like about this is that he goes, whoa, wait, 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 and he goes from this gesture with just bringing down the fingers into you sit down. It's such a cool combination of both of them. In animation, I would say don't do this, you don't want to cover faces and eyes, but live action is always some leeway there, but I love that, I love that look and always his reactions are great. And you can see throughout those things, I have a shot later on, where he's constantly somewhat awkward. He's always kind of not quite sure what to say or what to do. But anyway, let's go back to the second one. I love this and pay attention to that. It's not a chair that just has a backrest, it also has armrests. So what happens when he tries to sit down? <laughs> I love this. Now again, you might you have to find the right place and time in your shot obviously to use the prop with a chair like this. But I love this. I love the idea that the prop gives the actor an opportunity to do this. And you can do this where he gets off of this much more relaxed. He has a lot more trouble here. So a lot of chances and opportunities to do something interesting. And it's also how he turns this around and goes <clears throat> kind of to make a point. Second sequence is the discussion between these two. Again, you can see he has the awkward look. He's not quite looking at him. He is with his eyes, but he's kind of turned away. He's kind of off there. He's tiptoeing around here. And you can see the contrast with him, who's also fantastic in the show. But you can see he's calm, barely blinks. He doesn't really care. And you can see Barry has you know, lots of a little, a little up and down, little steps there. And you can see this throughout the whole sequence and there's uh, throughout the whole season and every episode you can see this where he inhales and gets ready to say something and all that stuff. Now, why am I showing you this? So you have all of those moments there where he seems just kind of nervous, doesn't know what to say because he's not in his element. He wants to be an actor. He wants to take his classes. That's why they talk. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because of this sequence. He, in his spare time, or in his spare time, in his, you know, actual job, is a hitman. Now look at how he looks, how he walks, how he says things, the confidence. He knows where to go. I mean, he's looking at this target here and warning there is a bloody scene coming up. So he's ready to shoot. And you can see this, you can see his expressions. He's much more determined to angry, but you know, he has a focus. He realizes, wait, something happened. He's already dead looks around and sees these guys and he has problems with his weapon. And look at this. There is no nervous up and down in his route. There's no side to side twist. He is straight and squared and he has that focus. Look, look at that. He goes, hey guys. And you know, you got three people, one with the gun that could be ready to shoot him. You would think that he would be nervous and shifting around, but no, this is his element. He is confident and look at this. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't shoot. And then he gets ready, spoiler, look at that, and then bam, 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 bam. Complete focus, he's ready and kills them all. Looks at this and walks away. So that to me is, again, this is tricky to potentially put this into one of your shots where you only have maybe six to 10 seconds. I totally understand. But as a whole, I like the idea of a character that is, you know, fish, fish out of water, is out of his element or her element and doesn't know what to do. And you can do this with this nervous, back and forth, the route up and down, lots of blinks looking around. And maybe you can incorporate that into your shot where a character is like this and then switches for whatever reason. He hears something, she sees something, or the character gets to a place where they're back to being familiar with that environment and the skills. And then you can see that awesome switch of, okay, now I know what to do. And then they focus on it. So something to think about as you want to do like a gear change, that gear change could be of unfamiliar to familiar, but let's continue with the sequences. Here we have a, an exchange between her and him. He is hitting on her all the time and he has that confident, you can see that the hips here. So like, yeah, he's ready to talk to her and she goes, what is going on? Throughout a, lot, a long time in the show, she resists. Spoiler, at the end she won't, they're, they're a cute couple. And you can see what he does at the end. It's mostly, it's not this, to me it's just that. I know this is just a simple thing, but I love this. To me it's like an added thing of confidence. It's like, all right, well, I'm gonna call you 
I'll see you later. All right. It's like someone that goes away and taps something, someone's back on the way out or something, but it's a small, simple thing that is outside of the dialogue, but again, using the prop, and it's an interesting exit because the character is gone and it's just his hand and his arm with that exit. Again, it's something very, very small, but I love those little character moments where imagine this is your shot and the thing is the character is confident. Yes, that means confident. And what can you do to show this? Well, you can show this you know, with the stance, that type of thing where, and the way he talks and you can have certain posing, but it could also be gestures and all those things outside of the audio with something like that. Next up is this fantastic sequence where he is somewhat of a prisoner here with these uh, hit guys and hit men and mafia type of Russian mob thing. And he has this around his neck, it's a bike lock. So he can't move, it can't escape, but there's still you know, somewhat relaxed enough that he can eat. Now, what do I like about this? He can't reach this. He goes ee! and does this. <laughs> I love this. I love this. It's so good. You might argue that this is a bit broad from that moment. He's hamming it up for the camera, but I love this. I mean, in terms of cartooniness and for your shots, this would be great. But I love this. He could just pull this, but no, he's doing this. This extra little tiny things. I just love that moment. Again, prop usage, a constraint. So whatever you can do with a prop, that will force the character to come up with solutions to get to this, which is his goal here. So that's why I'm always harping on props, because I think they give you so many more ideas to do something funny. That being said, pulling a little tablecloth thing with uh, drinks on there, you will see this later on. I mean, I will talk about the illusionist, but that is later on. Next up, we're back to this character and he has a conversation and is being called for his audition here. Audition, audition. <laughs> Again, he's asked discussion with her. But what I love is when he's done, they tell him, hey, you're ready. He goes, okay, I gotta go. Look at his face after this. Oh, it's so good. It's very small, very subtle. But he finishes this discussion. He's very pleased with himself because he gets closer and closer to his goal. And he has that expression of, oh, he's all happy. That is because of the phone conversation. And then he gets back and focuses on the person that calls him and then has this moment of, oh yeah, yeah. There's this switch of, I'm in my la la land. I'm dreaming about this woman. And I'm back to, oh, reality. Oh yeah, 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 okay, I'm coming. And he has that little nod. So let's watch this again in real time. I just love that. Those subtle little moments there, right? He finishes this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So good, so good. This is actually after just those shots that I talked about. He gets into this and this is just such a cool display of so many small little subtle things where, he, so he talks about an audition here and he says, I'm gonna give you two options here, right? So you can see how he comes in, he's happy, he's confident, he knows what to do, he kind of plays it up towards the people here. All right, well, that's what I do here, all right? I'm gonna give you two things, right? And then he talks about with the character, he says his name and it's the character who is doing blah, blah, blah in that scene. And then he does the scene. One. All right, and the line is, I'm waiting here. So this is one version of, I'm waiting here. And it doesn't seem super confident in animation, you would argue. It's twins, there are always somewhat different rules in animation versus live action. But he has this, and now he goes, two. And I love this too, he gets out of this mode, blink, all right, it's a blink, it's a change of scene in his head. I'm changing now character. I'm just quickly telling people, all right, two, and he's not completely different here, but it's just subtle enough to go, all right, two, and then watch this. Hey. Oh, it's so good, it's so small. I hope you can see this. It's this moment of, hey, we're waiting here, and it's much more aggressive. The character is much more confident. And you can see this with the stare, right? There's no blink. He's focusing on who he's talking to. And now look at this, look at the shoulders and the root. He has that little impatient up and down, ready? Oh, it's tiny, but it's so good. So good. Boop, boop. Oh, and then look at that. And then he's done with the scene. Again, blink for this is now a switch. I'm changing back to his, you know, charming. All right, thank you very much. Do you want something else? No, okay, well, thank you so much. And then he realizes this is just crappy. I'm not gonna get this. What am I doing here? Watch the switch. Just for a moment, he's back to being, uh, all right, that's my life. So good, so all those things, all those little things in here. And this could be something, I mean, you would have to find the line in your audio to animate this, but all those changes between this is his character, 
He has an audition one, audition two, back to his previous character of being charming and back to his true self. There's so many things he crammed into this where as an assignment, it would be your gear change. And again, you gotta find the proper line and audio to make this work. But think about this. And that's why I always like when people do animation exercises or the shots where it's an actor on stage, because then you have the license to go from one self to a pretend character to a good actor, bad actor, or then reacting to a bad audition. So I think that type of setting for your shot gives you so many options and especially a license to overact on purpose. Now I'm back to props because you know I love props. He found his confidence and he is talking to him and telling him, I am done with this. That's it. And oh, look at this. <gasps> he realizes, oh my God, I just flipped him off. It's technically his friend. It's kind of an abusive relationship, but you know, they provide for each other and do the all their job stuff. But he has this moment of, oh, but prop. This is why I'm here. Okay, so he slammed this down. He, hear, he interrupted him playing golf. And you can see how he does not care at all. He is still focused. He hasn't changed his stance. He hasn't changed his grip. Look what he does. So, okay. Well, don't really care. Boop. And does this. I love this. Prop usage onto prop usage. And I know, I know, I love props. And, you know, you have to make sure that you can also do all your acting and pantomime without the usage of sets and props and sounds. I totally understand. But I love this. It just emphasizes to me that he doesn't want to break his concentration or his, you know, the moment of, hey, I'm playing here. Just get out of here. I'm going to keep playing. I'm not going to take off the grip because, you know, he prepared the grip for the swing. He could take the hand off and squat down and, you know, kneel down and, and take this away. But no, he uses this because I don't want to change any of this. I want to play. This one's great too. And again, it all depends on the audio. He thought that Barry was dead. He sees him. He's really happy. Now, he does something where he squeezes his hands later at the table to show how happy he is. Now, I know in the audio he goes, so watch this, right? He goes, oh, I almost threw up here. I'm so excited. And then watch his hands. And not this here. <laughs> this. Right? Okay. I know that this is in the audio. Now, potentially, you might have a scene where he says, I'm so happy to see you. And then there's a pause. And he does this. And maybe you can find audio of a grunt or something. Oh, you can make your own sounds. But I thought just for a moment, this is an interesting thing of, well, they're so far away. How can I show that I'm happy to see you. And it's through this very intense squeeze, which is just a different form of this, right? I'm happy to see you. I'm hugging you with a squeeze and a lift. And this is just another way of showing this. So I just like the different ideas. And it's interesting to me watching those TV shows and movies and seeing those actors coming up with all of those interesting different ideas. Going back to this guy, he's part of the Russian mob. He is checking for Barry. This is the stage and the acting school. And he gets on stage and does this imaginary singing actually he does sing and then when he does this he's just a bit too loud at the end he kind of repeats the song and he goes <gasps> and he has this moment of wait i can't be too loud maybe someone hurt me i love that little change there that <gasps> and then he stops and then he has this moment of oh oh yeah thank you thank you he imagines that there's an audience <laughs> that cheers him on i love this i love the change from this to oh shh can do this but oh wait i'm on stage ah, people listen to me and then this acknowledgement of he might be hearing applause from the audience that's obviously not there and he goes oh well thank you so good so good this whole show is so good season one hbo you can watch it season two just start i'm going to start probably this weekend with episode one of season two and that's it from me barry go watch it if you can i absolutely loved it and that's it from me. Like I said, if you watch this whole thing, as always, thank you. As always, you're very patient. Give this a like and a subscribe if you want to. And hit that bell button because I do upload a lot. So you get all the notifications. And I'll see you tomorrow for my next clip.